Hello everyone, welcome to our brief tutorial on the new generation of PoE solutions. In this video, we'll be covering some key enhancements offered by the newly ratified IEEE A02 Dell 3 BT standard. Since the new PoE standard has opened the door to many high power applications such as smart lighting, IP surveillance, wireless connectivity, and many more. Thanks for joining us. Let's get started. Here are the topics we will cover. First, we will start with a quick overview of the IEEE A02-3BT standard to learn about what high-power PoE is. Next, we will move on to the key enhancement to realize what benefits A02-3BT could bring us. Lastly, we will be using a PSE tester from Cyforce Technology to demonstrate the power sourcing capabilities of Leontin's newly designed 90 watt PoE switch. First, let's look at the standard and application of high-power PoE. Driven by the demand for high-power and large bandwidth applications, PoE technology has continued to evolve with the release of the IEEE A02 Del 3 BT standard. The new PoE standard uses the same cabling specification as previous PoE standard and makes the higher power delivery possible by providing current through all four twisted pairs instead of delivering power over two twisted pairs in an Ethernet cable. By using the four twisted pairs, the amount of available power can be doubled because two PSE controllers will be used to power both the signal pairs and the spare pairs. Some examples of the applications for high-power PoE include the retail point-of-sale system, interactive kiosks, PTC security cameras with heaters, and high-performance wireless access points. Let's move on to the key enhancements of the IEEE A02 Del 3 BT standard. The new standard has defined several key enhancements that bring us the benefits of increased op operational efficiency and power savings. These key enhancements include updated PoE classification table, the support of higher speed Ethernet cabling, backward compatibility, short MPS, single or dual signature PD, and auto classification. We will talk about these key enhancements with more detail in the following slides. Let's look at the first key enhancement. The new standard has introduced Type 3 and Type 4 PSEs and PDs along with additional PoE classes. What it means is that more PoE power can be transferred from a PSE device to an H device. For example, it can be guaranteed that an H device can draw as much as 71.3 watts while sending 90 watts from a PSE device. The new standard also supports a data transfer rate of up to 10 gigabits per second based on CAT6 or 7 cabling. Therefore, numerous power-hungry and high-speed devices, such as the fifth generation of small cellular radio units, can be powered up by this standard. The high-power PoE is fully backwards compatible with the previous PoE standard. A low PoE class device such as class 1 PD can connect to a high PoE class device such as class 6 PSC without any issues. However, in a scenario where a high PoE class device such as a class 6 PD is connected to a low PoE class device such as a class 4 PSC, then the PD would either operate in a respective lower power state, which is called uh, power demotion, or the PD would operate at its highest power state causing the PSE to turn on and off. Both PSE and PD require the support of power demotion, but usually power demotion is not implemented due to additional costs. The short MPS refers to the minimum power consumption drawn by a PD during the standby mode in order to inform a PSE that the PD is still alive. Under the previous PoE standards, a PD had, has to draw power from a PSE at a 23% duty cycle, meaning that the PD is on 23% of the time but off 77% of the time, which leads to unacceptably large standby power if a large number of PDs, such as LED lighting, are deployed in an office building. Under the new standard, the duty cycle has been reduced to 2%. Therefore, the standby power has been minimized by a factor of 10. In this example, the street lamp will only draw 4 watts during the standby mode. 
The new PoE standard supports two types of PD configurations, that is single signature PD and dual signature PD. The PSE must support both single and dual signature PD. In a single signature PD, the same detection signature, classification signature, and MPS are shared between both pair sets. Whereas in dual signature PD, each pair set has its own detection signature, classification signature, and MPS. The benefit of having dual signature PD is that the independent monitoring on each pair set also allows for power saving, where one of the dual signature PD configurations may choose to go into the standby mode, whereas the other configuration may need to continue to operate at full power. In this PoE classification table, the dual signature PD can support up to PoE class 5, since each signature PD will draw up to 35 watts, which gives us a total of 70 watts. Lastly, auto classification refers to an optional classification method that allows a PD to communicate its actual power consumption to the PSE. In this way, the PSE is able to allocate precise power budget to the PD for better power e efficiency rather than allocating power budget by a PoE class. In our example, without using auto classification, the PSE allocates power by class. Therefore, there is 25 watts wasted since the PD only requires 65 watts to operate. Let's move on to our demonstration. Here is a quick review of what a basic PoE system is. A basic PoE system consists of a power sourcing equipment, a power device, and an unshield twisted pair cable. In our demonstration, the power sourcing equipment is a hardened six-port compact PoE switch, while the power device is a PoE tester from Cyforce Technology. There are two PCs. One of them is used to configure the PoE tester in order to perform emulations of these scenarios, such as single and dual signature PD, PoE loading conditions, signature validation, and short circuit conditions. The other PC is used to display the real-time status of each scenario display on a web GUI of the PoE switch. Here's the physical connection snapshot of the network topology mentioned in the previous slide. As you can see, the PoE tester emulates three power devices. Each power device has a single signature PD. Here we can see there are three power devices. Each power device has a dual signature PD. In this scenario, the red LED is flashing because power usage is already above 90%. Because 240 watts is the total power budget of this PoE switch. In addition, only the red LED will flash when power usage is beyond the limit. As you can see, the PoE function of each port can also be turned off manually while the dip switch. Here is a scenario where we had short circuits in all Ethernet cables. Therefore, all port LEDs are flashing orange, green, orange in a sequence. There is one second delay without flashing between each sequence. In this scenario, the emulation is based on only one of dual signature PD that works correctly in each power device. The other signature PD in each power device is either malfunction or invalid. Here, invalid represents a situation where power classification of a signature PD cannot be identified. Therefore, all port LEDs are flashing green, orange, green in a sequence. There's a one second delay without flashing between each sequence. Thank you everyone for watching our video and see you next time.